This is episode 110 in our road to Unicom, and today I review the AMX 1390. This is the tier 9 tracked French light tank in World of Tanks that features a 4 shell autoloader. We're going to look at this tank in a pair of highway battles. First up is a battle featuring two enemy EBRs. And so a number of you had asked me a couple things. One, can you do a review on the 1390? I last reviewed it back in 2015, which was before light tanks were changed to have standard matchmaking in patch 0.9.18. And the other kind of larger, more pressing question is how do I play a track light like the 1390 when there are EBRs in the game? And so the answer is you got to do it really carefully and understand your relative strengths and the things that they're really good at. So the 1390 has superb camo, approximately 36 in the garage if you have the concealment skills as well as brothers in arms, right? And of course you should be using vents in this tank, which boosts your concealment, your camo, uh, because you can't mount a rammer. But EBRs, you want to avoid, like the play, getting caught out in the open against them for three reasons. One, they have really high mobility. Two, they have a gun that's highly accurate on the move. And then in the case of the tier 9 and 10 tech tree EBRs and the tier 8 premium EBR, they have these huge wheels that act like Captain American, Captain America shields, right? So they're capable of preventing a lot of damage. So the combination of those three things make them very much a pain in the butt to deal with, especially, you know, if you go out in the field, like in the 1390, the gun handling on this is not so good, especially, you know, you'll get relatively high dispersion if you're having to fire on the move, right? And that's partly what makes the tier 8, 9, 10 EBR so problematic. It's the great accuracy with the terrific mobility with the Captain America wheels, right? Okay, and so what I'm doing is keeping that EBR 90 lit. The longer the window that I have him spotted, I can hopefully find opportunities to work in my gun like I did there a few seconds ago. And, you know, hopefully our friendly tank can also shoot him, right? Now what happened a little while ago is our 268 pushed up into the bushes next to me, got spotted on the way in, shot at multiple times, and then backed off. And he's doing it again, right? And you're going to watch him, you know, again get fired at, right? He's taking damage. And so, you know, I don't want to be around the bush when it's getting shot at because I might get hit accidentally. And two, because I had to back up away from the bush because he's being an idiot, I got spotted, right? Which sucks because now they know with a pretty good idea where I've been spotting. And if I go back to the bush where I was in a match like this, which takes some time to kind of play out, I could get blind fired. Right, so I'm going to rotate away from that bush, and you know I I can't trust that 268 not to do the same stupid thing again. He made the same mistake twice, right? Okay, so I'm surfing the ridge here, seeing if I can spot their EBR 105 because he hasn't been picked up yet. And you know, of course, the EBRs have really good camo, so it's possible he's sitting down in the riverbed below me somewhere in a bush, right? But because I'm not getting lit, he also might be sitting back a little further. Okay, now that I'm not getting lit, what I can recognize is and I haven't spotted him or anything else that isn't already lit. Maybe I can work my gun against these mediums that are on the A lane, right? And my platoon mate, Conrad, has gone to A1, which is a really important position to try to hold. Now, the tough thing can be finishing off these tanks that are below the A1 hill. And so I fire, notice I don't get lit here. So I'm continuing to fire on that Udez who was exposed, and then we managed to burn him down. Then look, I get spotted, so I quickly snapshot that Skoda and then pull back behind the ridge. Now, if there's already, you have to be careful playing out in field. There is no already in this game, so I just gotta be worried about those EBRs zooming me. And then the TDs, who are probably up on the six or seven lane, that shelf above their spawn. Okay, so I'm working on my way around counterclockwise again, and. I get lit. So, you know, that gives some indication of, you know, the EBR 105 is probably still somewhere on the north side of the E lane road. Because their EBR 90 was last spotted over by the zero lane by City. But you really have got to be enormously patient playing against EBRs. All right, so let's talk a bit about the changes to the 1390. So the clip size was reduced from six to four. 
the clip reload time was cut almost in half. So that represents a DPM increase. And then the gun handling was slightly improved from where it used to be. It's still not what I would consider a good handling gun, but you know, if you're stationary and firing, you can land decent shots. The silver penetration is 205, which is below average for a tier nine light tank. So, you know, that's in some situations, you may have some trouble penetrating opponents with the silver ammo. Although, you know, I find that overall it's reasonably workable. Um, I think one of the hardest things about playing this tank is the fact that the gun depression and gun elevation combination is very limited. And especially the gun elevation off the sides of the tank is only plus seven degrees. So it's very limited. So a lot of times if you're trying to fire up and down on tanks above or below you, uh, you're going to have trouble with that, especially over the side of the tank. And so if you're trying to aim up on a target, in some cases you'll need to turn and point your hull towards your target because over the front of the tank, the gun elevation goes up to plus 12. Now we have Lost City pretty decisively. None of our heavy tanks, as you'll see in the scoreboard, uh, did even 1,500 points of damage. So you know my immediate concern is to see if I can spot any of their tanks that are pushing west toward our cap from the J&K lanes. Now our, I'm doing some garden here knocking down trees intentionally to make a deeper bush line. So if I spot, I can back up and then shoot my gun without getting lit. Now I looked at their positions when I came over here. Our FV is sitting in a place where he can spot their tanks coming out of that gully over by G3, but he doesn't really have a good line of sight over on this J lane road, right? So whereas from where I am, I can see pretty good. And notice that our 7-4 has also come over here. He's got a pretty good sight line on any tanks that may come up the road from city. So I don't need to stay here and spot anymore. Two tank destroyers can hold down the fort here. Really, we've got to win somewhere. We lost city, obviously. Uh, most of their mediums are dead, or at least all of them are dead except for now their Skoda. So ideally, we'd like to win that A1 fight. My platoon mate has been staying alive, which is huge. If we lost, if Conrad dies at A1, they're going to be able to wrap us in field, you know, pick off the, the bat chat, and then at that point, you know, we're going to get pinned in the middle of the road, and middle of the <clears throat> pinned in the southwest corner of the map. Now, this is a, a great opportunity to see if I can hopefully land some shots. You know, obviously having clip size of four gives you four bites at the apple, and that EBR ran into the end of the screen, which slowed him down. And so, you know, when you're watching EBR's drive, there's a couple. Obviously, if they run into something, they lose, you know, lose their speed. Great time to shoot them. Uh, you know, also depending on how much of a quarter it is, you can sometimes predict where they're going to be. I love having a clip size of four. I've talked about this in plenty of other videos. It's a very manageable clip size. I think the ideal clip size is three or four uh, because you're able to do enough damage, but realistically, you know, tanks that have clip sizes of five or six, it's really rare that you're going to be able to use all of those shells without return, eating return fire. So I, ideally in an autoloader, you know, or what's practical is you'd like to try to get three, maybe four shots off with no shots coming back and then, you know, run away during your long reload. Okay, so their T-57 had, looks like he had exited city and then kind of come back to the middle of the map. So I was able to work some damage into him. And then I don't get spotted there as I cross over from the Skoda because there was a bush that helped to mask my approach. And the Skoda is actually looking to our left. He was looking for Conrad in the corner, and so we're able to double tap him and take him down. So that's huge. So the A lane fight in the northwest corner is now over. There's still the question of vision with the EBR 105, but you know that guy lost quite a bit of hit points when he was zooming around our base. And now we've spotted their FV, who had also left the city and presumably flexed counterclockwise around the map. And notice what I'm going to do here. So he's down in the ditch. I've been spotting from this bush, bush but I, in a moment, if I don't move, he's going to drop from my spotting, right? So I pivot here clockwise to this bush line, which allows me to diagonally push down closer to him and keep him lit. It's a very dangerous tank, obviously, but you know, as long as I'm not firing, I'm not going to get spotted. And that's you know partly due to the really good 36 camo rating this tank has with concealment and brothers in arms. I've still got that FV lit, and 
looks like our 704 just landed a really gorgeous long range shot and that leaves the FV one shot about go ahead and take the shot knowing that I'm pretty far back from the bushes so there's a reasonable chance that I'm not going to get lit when firing. Generally speaking I don't like to cross open ground when I'm reloading my clip because if you get shot at and spotted like this you can't fire back but anyway I go ahead and cross you know I got tracked by the 105 immediately repaired my tracks and I got to be careful approaching the Conway because this is a very gradual slope and he's behind trees so even if I can't see him he can still see me and shoot me right I actually died the other day in a similar situation an E3 shot me on that down slope and I was trying to climb it and we end up losing the game so I don't necessarily need to spot the Conway right now he's mostly likely gonna have to sit back in that A lane right those bushes uh, because you know he's not going to come down off of that plateau that doesn't make any sense so the real question right now is where is their 105 and if he's south of this Elaine Road and I spot him then potentially we could have both TDs and me firing on him and we know he's one shotable and that was <laughs> that was some pretty swift driving on my part but the important thing is to locate the 105 and the 105 and the Conway are possibly really split up, right? If that's the case, then we could focus on taking one of them. Generally speaking, I don't recommend driving to a place where you'll put yourself in between two separate enemy tanks, but if the EBR 105 was south of the Elaine Road, it's pretty far from the Conway, they're not meaningfully going to be able to help each other. So the EBR has now pivoted to the northeast corner of the map. This is actually really good for us because now we can start to tighten the noose, right? The our AMX 30 in my platoon, the 704 in me, we can close the ring in terms of where they are and whenever this happens the team that's closing the ring because we are the ones surrounding them we have a much bigger advantage in terms of being able to pre-aim our guns in the right direction right so if one of us is spotted the AMX 3704 or me the enemy tanks have to kind of reposition and aim their gun at one of us right versus we all know that those tanks are either like in my case north of me or in Conrad's case to the east of him so we can pre-aim our guns. It's one of those little details that matters you know in terms of out shooting your opponent right and then now that you know this Conway he didn't really have a lot of choices here um, if I were in his shoes I would have probably stayed closer to the ridge behind a bush so he could have spotted them coming up but nonetheless once the 105 died that game was pretty much over. I think it was really funny if you read the chat 268 was being a total jerk right and he even said right before the end of that match that he would have shot me and the thing is you know I'm so glad in this game that for gaming removed team damage I cannot tell you the number of times I was shot at by some dingus on my team who doesn't understand how vision mechanics and spotting should be done properly shot me because they got impatient right in the last match I was really patient because they're two EBRs right there's no way I'm going out and field that would just be stupid and playing to their strengths not mine Right. Instead, I counter-spotted them, you know, conserved my hit points, worked my gun in when I could, and then late game was able to carry. You know, obviously, it can be very frustrating playing against EBRs, uh, but you just got to be, like, my biggest advice on open maps, be patient, leverage what you're good at, in the case of 1390, superb camo, very good passive spotting, and you've got an auto-loaner when you've got shots, eh, try to take up to four of them. Now, in this particular battle, there is one arty, uh, no EBR. And we can talk a little bit about other aspects of this tank. So I've already talked about the gun pressure and gun elevation. You know, that can be really uh, kind of irritating to deal with on this tank. And so generally speaking, you, to hit on targets that are meaningfully above you, you've got to be pointed toward them. Now, notice I get spotted there after my second shot, but I take the time to fire the additional two ones. Why? When you get spotted, it takes time for people to aim in to you to the... Projector 65 is in a super dangerous position for us, right? So getting that extra shot at the end, dropping him down to 400 hit points or so, was really important. Now, I'm going to take a gamble here. I've dropped from his spotting. I go back into the bush line hoping to get some shots, and then the RD fires reasonably close to me, and then the Projecto hits me directly. At that point, I realize, oh man, I never dropped from being spotted. So what happened here? Well, in a moment, their T49 is going to fire his drip gun at me right there and I'm gonna get him spotted down on the E2 area, right? So what probably happened when I dumped my first clip against that Progetto, their T49 kept me lit the whole way. That's why they're already fired near me and you know got some splash damage and why their Progetto was able to aim on me specifically. And the, the bummer is I've lost my driver here. So I've gotta be really careful because 
you know, turning and trying to drive, the tank is going to be a lot more sluggish, which means I'm going to be a much easier target to hit. You know, and I've, I've already burned my first aid kit, so I'm going to have to wait a little while to be able to use it again. But that's okay. You know, we have a general idea where they are. You know, I've got better camo than the T49. A lot of T49s who play the dark gun don't run optics. I actually think that's a mistake. I think no matter which light you play, your, your primary responsibility is vision and being able to spot things. Uh, but what I did here is you know, rotate a clockwise around the map. I'm now perpendicular to this M46. I don't get lit despite firing, and that's a good thing to know. I am going to move up a little bit behind these bushes here, and you can see right there, I can't lift the gun up. Um, on the sides and rear of the tank, the max elevation is only plus 7 degrees, which is really limiting, so I have to turn my hull to face toward the M46, but I'm able to land some really sweet perpendicular shots on the side of his tank, and you know, obviously a tank like the M46 is so tall, it's hard for him to hide his, the side of his turret and the side of his hull armor when he gets spotted. Our AMX 5100, by the way, has made a terrible decision pushing so deeply in field by himself, and he did so at a time when we didn't have some other tanks spotted. If you're in a heavy tank or any tank that really has poor vision and no camo to speak of, you're going to get outlit, right? And he should have really been patient. Now, their, M their T49, since he's spotted, was well, in a tough position because he's taking fire from our medium tanks that are over by A2. And so when he, when he backed up from behind the building, he's giving me shots. It really, he didn't really have anywhere to go. That can be a bit of a tough position to be in, and that's part of the reason why I rotated down onto the D-lane, was to be able to apply that perpendicular pressure. Now this bush that I'm moving up to here, this is a pretty good position. I've got that trifecta, good field of view, adjacent hardcover, which is just to my left behind me, and then the bushes. Now granted, if I get spotted, I won't have any hardcover from those tanks that are in the northwest corner of the map, but if I get spotted by tanks that are southwest of me, I can use that water tower, the brick area, and mostly hide behind it because I'm pretty pretty low in terms of profile. And that's another strength of this tank. The clip size is really manageable at four, and what was nice when the changes for this tank were introduced to bump it up to a tier nine tank in 0 0.9.18 is that the intra clip reload, the reload between shells, was reduced from about 2.7 seconds down to 2.2. That makes a huge difference in terms of how quickly you can dump your clip. You can do it now, 960 damage in about 6.6 .6 seconds, which you know, obviously is good in an autoloader. You want to minimize your exposure, try to you know, put in as many shells as possible, and then get away ideally without getting shot at. The silver APCR pen on this tank is a little bit on the low side, it's at 205. Now granted, you know, it, that's still workable and certainly, you know, a light tank like this, which has, you know, reasonably good mobility, um, you know, you can get flanking shots on tanks. And our Waffentrager and Artie are both doing the really wise thing and getting the heck away from our base. You know, the Waffentrager in particular, you know, has a, those huge bat-like ears and he's made of paper, so him getting away is actually a really wise thing to do. And you know, because me and my two platoon mates here, Tonster and Begetted, you know, we're rotating back to base because countering their exit from city and especially when they come to cap our base is the smartest thing for us to do. The thing our charioteer is doing since they're already is dead by pushing their base if they have any snipers or campers he's conceding the first shot advantage to them most likely right so if there are any enemy TDs near their base they're going to be sitting behind a bush they're going to outspot the charioteer get the first shot advantage and you know potentially take the charioteer out and also you know, the thing is, if you push their base right now, you're giving their camper something to do. Right? Like, we know pretty much for a surety, their tanks at one city are probably going to push toward our cap, and that's exactly what happens. And I'm able to work this bush line here to clip out that ISU 152. And so I'm going to get, I, I'm just running in a little circle here leveraging these bushes. There's a little bit of a gap in between the bushes, so you want to be careful when you cross gaps like that. Um, the thing for me is that to note is that that Striv has appeared and he'll bounce most of my shots on his frontal hull. So that's a you know tough thing to deal with with AP or APC or for guns. Like see, he's the tier nine. So for guns that are of uh, 90 millimeters in caliber or less, he will auto bounce those. I'm trying to remember if the Striv 
the tier 9 strip has 30 or 40 millimeters of armor. I'm actually going to check what we're looking here. But nonetheless, you can see there I can't penetrate him. The only shot that I have will be on his cupola, which I'll show you in just a minute here. And notice I'm not firing on the E75. You know, his hull is angled at a position which would make it difficult for me to penetrate him. And so, you know, I just wait and let one of my other you know, friendlies take the shot on him. Yeah, the Striv's armor, it's uh, it's 40 millimeters of hull armor on the front. And so that, that's auto bounce territory. Moreover, you know, some people might ask, well, why don't you just rush the Striv, right? Before he just got hit by Artie, he was at a hit point level where I couldn't clip him out, right? I think a lot of people get carried away. They think because they have an autoloader, they have to go YOLO and try to dump their clip. And uh, you want to be selective when you do it, right? Now, what's really smart here is Begetted has, he went counterclockwise up around the hill, right? So he's now perpendicular to me, which means this Emil, which is staring at our 7-1, is giving me flanking shots, right? And for that matter, the Striv is also looking to my right. He's now just starting to rotate, so I can't shoot him frontally, but I take the time to aim in on that cupola to get the kill shot. And that's why it's really worth spending some time on tanks.gg, taking a look at the armor profiles of tanks. The general... I always find it easiest to do research when you've got a use case. Like you could spend, there's like hundreds of tanks on tanks.gg. You could spend countless hours grinding through and looking at all the armor models. I don't find that terribly effective. You know, you'll get burned out. You won't retain anything. Generally, what I what I do is when there's a tank that I've struggled to penetrate, I make a note of it, and then after I'm done playing, go to tanks.gg, bring up the 3D model, and inspect it to figure out where I can shoot it. You know, and, and where I won't pen. At this point, the game's pretty academic. You know, we haven't seen their JPE in a long time, so I would make the reasonable guess. He's probably still sitting in their base and camping, which means, you know, he's been largely inactive for a big stretch of this battle. So generally speaking, when you're pushing on enemies, I, I don't push diagonally across the field. Uh, you know, I go ahead and paint the corner here just in case one of them's in the city. Let's make sure we pick them off, and then I'm going to move down the K lane. But that way I can be really careful you know, and especially if you're approaching from the city, you can if you get spotted, you can always duck and weave in the buildings uh, to protect yourself. All right, so I've got the T28 Prot lit. Most T28 Prot drivers don't run optics, which I actually do in brawling American heavies because the vision is so good, and I'm able to put some really sweet penetrating shots through the side of his turret. The shell velocity on this tank is also uh, it's it's the best for the silver rounds at tier 9 light, so, you know, it, high shell velocity is always welcome, makes it easier to hit targets for the duck behind cover, and certainly easier to hit targets who are moving because you don't have to lead them as much. The tank also has low hit points of uh, 1200, so you want to be careful, and it also has somewhat sluggish hull traverse and acceleration, so it's a little bit sluggish getting started and turning. But, you know, obviously with a tank like this, you want to use the mobility to get around the map and not necessarily to YOLO scout. And I find it so ironic the way that a lot of people play the wheeled tanks now is how they used to play their tracked light tanks, which is like YOLOing idiots. And you guys have known on my channel, I've always said that's totally the wrong way to play light tanks that are tracked. So a nice job by our platoon in helping to carry this battle and certainly pivoting back to base to defend and using Vision to pick off their tanks in that area. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the 1390, and I will see you guys later. Take care.